Hello and welcome to this tutorial on TensorFlow in 10 minutes. So what's in it for you? First we'll be looking at what exactly TensorFlow is and by whom it was developed. Then we'll take a look at tensors, the basic foundational building blocks of TensorFlow. Then we'll look at some features of TensorFlow which make it so desirable. Finally we'll be looking at some companies which use TensorFlow in their day-to-day -day working and we'll look at the different applications in which they use TensorFlow. Then we'll be taking a look at neural networks with TensorFlow. So let's get started. First, what exactly is TensorFlow? TensorFlow is nothing but a Python software library which was created by Google to help implement large-scale machine learning models and to help solve complex numerical problems. It was developed by the Google AI team and TensorFlow helps us implement machine learning using Python while keeping the mathematical computation of the entire process in C++, hence helping us calculate complex numerical problems faster. Machine learning is a very daunting task and using TensorFlow we can streamline the process of acquiring data, training our model, serving predictions and refining future results in a very easy and fast way. TensorFlow is used by Google itself in all Google services which use AI and to help optimize the Google search bar. TensorFlow helps in sorting through huge amounts of data to help find the relevant search results. Now what exactly are tensors? Tensors are nothing but simply containers which are used to hold data in the form of matrices. The tensors can be of any dimension and using tensors we can perform linear operations on vast quantities of data. Uh, now tensors can hold data in any dimension as I said, they can hold it in 3D space too. Tensors are nothing but matrices and matrices as we know can be of one dimension which means that it has a single column and multiple rows, two dimension which means it has multiple columns and multiple rows or three dimension which means along with having rows and columns, it has multiple rows and columns stacked behind one another. This makes holding vast quantities of data very simple in TensorFlow and performing matrix calculations on these huge quantities of data very simple. Using tensors we can perform dot product as well as cross product easily on 3 dimension tensors. The next topic that we'll be dealing with is features of TensorFlow. One of the main features of TensorFlow is that it's an open source library which means that anyone can use TensorFlow as long as they have an internet connection. People can manipulate TensorFlow in ways which you can't even think of and come up with amazing and new products. It has become a DIY community and it has a huge forum for people who are getting started with it and for those who find it hard to use it or for those who need help with their work. It also has a really good documentation, a lot of people who are already working on TensorFlow which means that you have a lot of support available from around the world. Another feature of TensorFlow is that it has a large community of users. It's been developed by Google, so it already has an amazing software uh, engineering team who works on stability improvements continuously. Using TensorFlow, you can train multiple neural networks parallelly. TensorFlow offers pipelining, which means that you can train multiple neural networks and multiple GPUs at the same time. TensorFlow also offers in-depth graph visualization. In TensorFlow, you don't really have a separate graph method to create graphs. Instead, you have computational graphs, which are built-in processes, which use the library without needing to call a graph object directly. A graph object in TensorFlow can be created as a result of a simple line of code. Like, let's say we take two tensors and we add them up. This will create an operation node that will take two tensors and produce their sum and create a graph automatically of that. Another feature is that TensorFlow has adopted Keras for high-level APIs. Keras is only an extension for making it easier to read and write machine learning programs. While TensorFlow is an open source library, Keras is simply a neural network library. TensorFlow will provide both high-level and low-level APIs while Keras provides only high-level APIs which work with neural networks. It's also easy to train a machine learning model on both CPUs and GPUs using TensorFlow. Now let's take a look at some of the companies which use TensorFlow and the various operations in which they've implemented TensorFlow. First company that we'll be looking at is Airbnb. The Airbnb engineering and data science team has applied machine learning using TensorFlow to classify images and detect objects at scale and helping in improving the guest experience. 
Machine Learning with TensorFlow enabled mobile proof of purchase at Coca-Cola. Advances in artificial intelligence and the maturity of TensorFlow enabled the Coca-Cola company to finally achieve a long sought after frictionless proof of purchase capability on their mobile app by using TensorFlow. Airbus also uses TensorFlow and they use it to extract information from satellite images and deliver valuable insights to their clients. Machine learning helps with monitoring changes to the earth's surface for urban planning, fighting illegal construction and mapping damage and landscape changes which are caused by natural catastrophes. All of this is used by Airbus to gather statistics and to deliver valuable insights. Intel has partnered with Google to optimize TensorFlow inference performance across different models. This work has resulted in up to 2.8 times performance improvement, which benefits the TensorFlow community and a wide range of customers using TensorFlow on Intel platforms. PayPal is also using TensorFlow and it's using it to stay at cutting edge of fraud detection. Using TensorFlow, deep transfer learning and generative modeling, PayPal has been able to recognize complex, temporarily varying fraud patterns to help increase their fraud decline accuracy while improving experience of legitimate users through increased precision and identification. And finally, Lenovo. Lenovo's intelligent computing orchestration is using TensorFlow to help accelerate the intelligent revolution. The Lenovo Leco platform, which is nothing but the Lenovo Intelligent Computing Orchestration platform, accelerates AI training and traditional high-performance computing and optimizes deep learning training with TensorFlow integration and optimization. Leco provides various built-in TensorFlow models and supports optimized distributed training of these models. Now let's dive into neural networks with TensorFlow. Before we really start neural networks, let's see how computation is done in TensorFlow. In TensorFlow, all numerical calculations are done using computational graphs. Computational graphs are nothing more than graphs where each node will correspond to a new mathematical operation. These mathematical operations will be performed on the input tensors. Computational graphs are a way of expressing and evaluating a mathematical operation. They further allow TensorFlow to perform lazy computing. What is lazy computing exactly? Lazy computing is nothing more than representing computation without actually performing it until it is asked. To create computational graphs, the first thing that we're going to do is represent our data flow, which is nothing more than the way our data is flowing in our program in the form of a graph. On the screen here, we have a very simple graph. We have our data x, y and a constant 2, which is being fed into our operators which are the nodes of a graph. The operators here are multiplication and addition. The data that we're inputting to our graph is in the form of tensors. Even 2, which is nothing more than a constant in this case, will have to be saved as a tensor before we can compute on it. The tensors are the input to our graphs and the nodes will perform various mathematical operations on our tensors. Now, one of the main advantages of having a graph is flexibility. When you create a graph, you're not bound to run the whole graph. In this case, I can run only a single node, let's say this multiplication between X and Y, without really having to perform addition between Y and 2. This allows flexibility to a certain level. We can control parts of the graphs and we can execute them separately. And one of the biggest advantages of TensorFlow further is the visualization of these computational graphs. To run a part of the graph is called running a session. This is the second part of our computational graphs. After creating a graph, we want to run it. But we might not want to run the entire graph. We might only want to run a part of it. To run a part of the graph, we have to create a session. To compute anything, a graph must be launched in a session. Technically, sessions place the graph outputs on hardware such as CPUs or GPUs and provides method to execute them. Session objects are created and then using a run method in our code, we will run enough of the computational graph to get our desired output. That means that we only run which part of the graph is absolutely necessary to run. In the case of this example, we only want to get our x multiplied by y and our y plus 2. So we're only running the bottom two nodes of our graph without really running the top part. This will not only save computational power, it will also increase the efficiency of our computation. Now let's look into neural networks. The first question that comes into mind is what exactly are neural networks? Neural networks are a set of artificial neurons with multiple layers that's designed to mimic how the human brain works. 
A neural network will contain layers of interconnected nodes. All the circles in our diagram represent the various nodes of our neural networks which are connected to one another. Neural networks are in the form of layers. The first layer is our input layer which contains nothing more than our input tensors. The input tensors will each have a weight associated with them depending on how important they are to our output layer. The hidden layer in the middle will help fine-tune the input weightings until the neural network's margin of error is minimal. Each node in our neural network can be taken as a perceptron and is similar to a multiple linear regression. The perceptron feeds the signal which is produced by multiple linear regressions into an activation function which may be non-linear. The activation function is present within our nodes and depending on the activation function, we decide the weightage of our node. Now, in TensorFlow, we know that our data is saved in the form of tensors. These tensors are the input to all of our nodes and all of the tensors are implemented in the form of Python. The computation which is taking place within our nodes, the activation functions and the hidden layer functions are all implemented in C++. The reason we use C++ is because C++ is relatively faster than Python and this makes implementing our neural network using TensorFlow a very fast process. Thank you for watching this video. For more videos like this and for more information, please visit www.simplylearn.com. Hi there! If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.